Uh, okay, so I'll move on to the next section, structured data. And this is where you will start doing labs. Um, I start with structured data because it is, if you remember the flow chart that I gave you, it can be at the source, it can be at the target. Because you read from relational databases, ERP systems like SAP, Oracle eBusiness, PeopleSoft, Siebel, those are there, you know. I am, I, it is really unfortunate, this is something that, you know, since I work here, that nobody is, there is a lot of entrepreneurship, lot of money, lot of brain power going behind finding out how they can improve or reduce your wait time for a taxi cab to come from four minutes to three and a half minutes. But nobody is reinventing the ERP system. It's so boring. It's boring, right? It was not so boring 20 years ago. You can make it, you can make it not boring. You can think of building stuff that actually matters. I mean, you know, again, digression. And this is not, if I don't say this, it's not interesting. How many of you think Apple's face ID recognition is cool? No one. No one? <laughs> the only co no, it costs, it costs only uh, a thousand bucks. <laughs> my wife got it, and she was like, look, I don't have to uh, put my finger, I just can just uh, unlock my phone like that. But what, it can unlock while she's holding the phone. So it is matter of taking the thumb from here and pressing here. <laughs> is, it a sol is it solving problem or is it like, technology for the sake of technology. I'll tell you what will happen, and it's not that I know what will happen, but I can, I can predict. The biggest thing that I have seen is, is I personally think the larger innovation that came uh, in with the new release of the phone was not that face ID recognition, but the SIM card going onto your watch. Yes. You can actually make phone calls from your watch uh, and those ear pods. So effectively, now you don't need a phone. So that, I think, is a better innovation. But you know, we'll see. You are right. Augmentation, augmented reality, uh, we, I was talking to a, a customer or ex, you know, a friend who has asked for some advice. He runs an uh, uh, interesting company. They are called, uh, they build cabinets, you know, cabinets in closets, then bookshelves and all that. They are asking for if there is any way to build augmented reality so that you can wear some device and in your room you can figure out where to put the closet. What is, what is a null value? No, first what is a null value before we go there? Empty, right? It's empty. Empty is null value. So if I add, null value is not zero. And null value plus one is equal to one? No. So you, is it going to be, it, do you call it empty? Here is the thing. You can update an empty room, empty field cell with one. But you cannot add to it. You, can add, you cannot add to it. So out of these, which one is correct? One and three. Very good. So now you have already mastered the language of SQL. <laughs> No. So if you want to test your SQL knowledge, there's a site I came across called Analytics Vidya, which is, means analytics, studying knowledge, that actually has this very wonderful set of 40 questions that actually takes you through uh, different uh, you know, tests. And I, I, I really like uh, the questions they asked. I won't tell you how much I scored. That's a secret. Now, OK. So, this is, this is a chart that I really like. How much is SQL needed, required for a data scientist? It is here. And the guys who, are, who know R, Python, and SQL equally comfortably, they are making all the big bucks, I can tell you. But of these three, I think SQL is the easiest to learn. Although, it is most difficult to write proper SQL. When you have 
10 different tables where from which you have to extract data out you have, and you have to figure out an efficient way of writing query, it becomes a challenge. Query optimization, query path analysis, there is a whole science and uh, interestingly, I did some work in that space. I was the product manager for Oracle's performance toolkit, diagnostics and tuning packs. So my job was to look at SQL execution path and SQL optimizer. It is a, it is a, I would say it's a science uh, and or rather the science has transformed into an art. It's very difficult. But the autonomous database is about getting your databases in the cloud where they are saying that, hey, we, will, we have made all the operational work to that you needed to maintain and run the database, databases. <coughs> so autonomous, depending on machine learning algorithms, the stuff that I was talking about, the, if error, if a certain error comes, the database will self-correct it. It will create, apply a patch automatically if it sees a certain problem. Auto patching and those kind of things will happen. No, no, that is already done 10 years ago. Okay. There is a tuning pack that actually does self-tuning, probably it came in in 2008 or 9. So that is, that problem is solved. But if you ask me, that only solves 10% of actual problems. The because that's where the humans are needed. Because you can only feed an engine certain rules whenever there's a deviation from the rule. So a lot of people had that tuning option, self-tuning option in, <coughs> in read-only mode. So it analyzes query and gives you a feedback saying that this is the changes that you need to do. Okay, so why SQL is important for uh, uh, data science? You can see that SQL has, I mean, the SQL, the language, um, there's a lot of unstructured data came out uh, in the last five, six years or so. So no SQL databases came into the picture and the need to scale out systems. I'll talk about it as well. And <coughs> all the, the learning curve associated with any of the other things that I was talking is so high that at one point the entire Silicon Valley was building SQL on Hadoop, SQL on this. Uh, there are packages called SQL DF on R. Oracle has a package called Oracle R where the, all the R functions are built into SQL. You can write, say, SQL, then the R function and from the table. So it is, it is the, I would say, the entry point. If you don't know SQL, it will be very difficult for you to uh, sort of go through the data that you have created after all the cleaning and, and also extracting data from uh, sources. There is a big, good picture that circulates in LinkedIn. So, you can do all these cloud, these cloud offerings as pizza. Pizza is, uh, you buy the dough, buy the material, you help, take help from your son, build a pizza pie, bake it, there are burnt edges, rough edges, you are fine with that. That's like on-prem development. It's okay, you know, some things will happen, problems will happen. <coughs> now. You are in a hurry, you go to the safe way or lucky and get a built-in dough, the pie is there, you put your own topping and cheese, you bake it in your oven, that's still pizza. It's called infrastructure as a service because you just got stuff but you cooked it yourself. No, no, I will go, go there. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you are analytical package SaaS. Okay, I was in the cloud world. No, you just tell me the cloud Okay, 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 I'll finish this, then I'll go there. Uh, okay, okay, so you take up the phone and you order pizza, it gets delivered. Is there, your son comes home late, you warm it and you have it. It's pass. Because you got everything, but you still did some work. You got it at home. Now, you take out the whole family, got into a car, went to a restaurant, and ate, it, ate your pizza out there. Now, if the pizza is not round, if it has burnt ages, you're going to be very disappointed about it. And the service really matters, because if the waiter doesn't listen to you, you'll be very upset, you will not pay a tip. That's SaaS. 
because that's the point where you have done nothing but you have just consumed a service from a particular vendor. These are very important things that you do. Um, you have to run your business. You have joined a new company. You are, the, uh, you are responsible for the business of certain Acme steel. You, what is the first thing you do as a, you know, in charge of the company, CEO? You would first say, who are my top 10 customers? What were the top 10 deals that happened? So that is the top N analysis that happens in a lot of data analysis. Then there is a need to bucket. Bucketing is very interesting. Uh, you know, I, since I was a product manager, I was responsible for increasing the revenue of products. So what do I do? I look at the revenue information and I bucket it by regions. Say EMEA, US, APAC, and I look at the average deal size in each of the region. And then I see, okay, the average deal size in China is $10,000, and the average deal size in US is $700,000. So if there is a requirement from a customer from US, I'll give it more priority because my $700,000 is at stake. So those type of analysis happens using bucketing and also ranking together. And these are some examples that are already there, and this is from Oracle, uh, that are already there as statistical functions built into the database. So you don't really have to get the data out and write it in Python. If you have access to an Oracle database, you have a licensed access to an Oracle database, then you can probably uh, do it. Uh, I mean, you can also, some of these things are ha available on MySQL as well, which you're going to do. So the next slide is the lab that you're going to do. So whoever has access to uh, the virtual box, please walk with me. Now here, MySQL minus U root minus P, and the password will be asked as data. Now once you're in the MySQL prompt, my, once you're in the MySQL prompt, I want you to follow this exercise here and let me know whether it works or not at the end of this after i have shown you a few things you can this you have to do it yourself virtual box is a way of running helping you run a fully full-fledged os on your laptop and it's a way for us to give you exercises because most data science activity runs on linux uh, so this is a Linux distribution of called Ubuntu, okay. and this is basically, uh, if you want to become a data scientist, I think more than Python uh, are your Unix skills are equally important. So you need to learn Linux, and we have set up an environment. I would say after you leave the training, you can still use the virtual box to capture data and do the analysis. It gives you the platform. You don't have to set up anything on your laptop. So you have Anaconda and all, all the, everything, my, I have given you a database, I have set up a Python, everything. So you can, you can use that. Homework for you guys. There is, you go to data.gov and there is a very good example of restaurant data in the US. Your homework is going to download that data and upload it, upload it into your MySQL database and tell me which state or which city has the maximum number of restaurants in US. So, so that, what is the reason? Because you are going to start a grocery delivery service. Your business goal is to start a grocery delivery service. You want to start the service in a city where there are a lot of restaurants because restaurants can be your buyers. So you have to find out which city in the US has the number of most number of restaurants and no Google searches allowed. Google tell me that, you know, which city has the, or Alexa, can you tell me which city has the maximum number of restaurants? The question is which state has the max or which city has the maximum number of restaurants? You download the data and the city column is empty. Then you have to clean that data, right? So you have to do that. 
Uh, you can either use SQL, you can either use Python, uh, because in the next five slides I'm going to go to Python, and after that you're going to be experts in Python. So, uh, I think the answer is, uh, uh, the, the count I guess is 18. Which number have which? There are a lot of customers with the orders 18, right? So any one of those, okay?